I think personally, this is just the first domino to fall. I think Sean is going to make some massive changes. Uh-huh. And uh, the person that I think we look to next is, is George <coughs> Payton. And what does this mean for him moving forward? I mean, he was, he's been a dead man walking since the second Sean Payton got hired. And a lot of people feel that way about Russ. I personally think Sean was willing to give it a, the old college try with Russ. Mm-hmm. But Sean, uh, George Payton, I think it was always, okay, well, next year I'm getting myself a new GM. See, I felt like that until the five-game win streak. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, with Nick Benito playing better if Riley Moss is able to take a role Marvin Mims if he takes a step up in the Broncos offense and and a lot of these guys that George Payton drafted because that's pretty much the only thing good thing that he has as his drafts that he can point to if those guys help the Broncos make the playoffs and they are 10 and 7 make the playoffs then I could see George Payton being back and Sean Payton really just using George as like an information gatherer on the draft and free Mm -hmm. agency and then Sean's clearly the one making the calls but now, especially with how much we know Sean Payton was very unhappy with Russ's contract, and now with the team not going to make the playoffs, he's gone. He's gone. And how pissed do you think Sean was at Russ's contract and having to go through this and now being embarrassed by it with these reports coming out? I don't think there's any way that maybe George is here through the draft. And then they make a change after, but I would be shocked to see George Payton back at the start of 2024. I think, ultimately, I think he may be gone, but it's also, I also think, like, he would be fully indebted to Sean to be here next year. <laughs> like, he knows he doesn't, I think, deserve his job now. It hasn't worked out well. But if Sean was to keep him, whatever Sean wanted goes – like like you said, he would gather information. Yep. If Sean wanted a player gone, the player's gone. It almost would be like Sean's kind of like able to be the GM and the head coach and kind of has an assistant GM in mm-hmm. George Payton. So I think he would be gone, but at the same time, like it could work out to where Sean has complete control because we know how Sean is. He likes to have control over every, over every aspect of the football operations that would just give him more control and not to have to bring somebody in that he would have to negotiate with or talk to or have to come to an understanding the understanding is there this is my ship and i call the shots i think you're totally right i just think sean payton's going to bring in someone who's going to do those exact same things that's just a closer friend of his. okay yep uh, and an assistant gm from the saints potentially yep what's what's his name uh, the assistant GM. Uh, well, then there was the guy he worked with all those years. Uh, Ireland? Is it Ireland? Right. Yep, 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 Jeff Ireland. Yep. yep. I just, yeah, I think you're totally right. I mean, uh-huh. Sean wants to run everything, and he's going to. I think that when uh, the Walton Penner Group hired him, they did so under the understanding that he's now the, you know, the the head coach, yep. the offensive coordinator, the GM, yep. the head of scouting. Like what he says goes. Um, and I just think it's a nice little, like, scapegoat for him to be like, oh, I didn't have my guy in here. Like, let me get my guy in here. Watch how good things are going to be. Um, and we, I mean, this is not new. Like, we said this from the jump. We even said it about Russell Wilson. Right? <coughs> we said when, the second that Sean Payton started talking about Russell Wilson and was completely noncommittal about anything, it was very clear, okay, well, he is not confident, one, that this is going to work out, and two, doesn't hate the idea that at the end of the season, if things don't go the way they wanted it to, he can essentially, without directly doing it, say, yeah, well, I didn't have my quarterback, and that, that's not my quarterback. Listen, you know, I never said that was my quarterback. So uh, I think that it'll work out the way that we kind of always thought it would. Sean's going to have his quarterback, his GM, all the coaches that he wants, uh, the players that he wants, and you, you kind of have to have some, uh, some blind faith that it's going to work out. Yeah. So- it was funny because I feel like a lot of the uh, early reports was like Sean took this job because of Russ and he feels like he can turn Russ around and he's excited to work with Russ. But now maybe then that none of that was the case. It was more about the money. It was more about the ability to have command over the entire organization at some point and ultimately have his own ship. And it had nothing to do with Russell Wilson. There was an incredibly awkward uh, exchange on the Pat McAfee show oh, <laughs> when yeah. Sean Payton was at the Super Bowl about exactly that. Yeah. Because Sean Payton was asked pretty straight up, like, did you take this job because of Russ? Uh-huh. And he was essentially said no. Yeah. Then they're like, okay, well, do you love Russ? 
And he didn't answer. They're like, okay, do you like Russ? And he's like, yeah, no, like he's a good one. I don't remember the exact tree. But it was very clear then and there that like Sean did not take the job because of Russ. And uh, I mean, he probably took the job because it was really, really good pay. Yeah. And Sean went out of his way to make it awkward yes. about how much so. Was it Super Bowl week, I think? Super Bowl week, yeah. uh, He and Russ got dinner, and it, there was a picture tweeted out of them at dinner together. And so it was the first time that we had seen those two together. And the next time Sean talked to the media, he was asked, how was dinner with uh, Russ, and how was it getting to, to meet him? And Sean said, Joe Montana was there, too. Joe, uh, awesome to talk to a legend like Joe and chop up football. Oh, and Russ was there, yeah. But he it made it like, seem like they just <laughs> happened to run into uh-huh. each other at dinner. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I think for a little bit, What Sean... was the other one with the Nuggets game? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, sat next like, to, yeah. You know, they sat next to each other at the Nuggets game. Yep. And they asked Sean, like, oh, like, did you, did, did you guys, like, go to the Nuggets game together? He's like, no, it's just a coincidence that our <laughs> seats were next to each other. <laughs> and those are the things where it'd be so easy. <laughs> For a coach just to be like, yeah, great time. Uh-huh. And uh, show some love toward yep. a starting quarterback. And now Sean gets to do that. With, with this next guy, I expect the starting quarterback to be treated a lot differently from an on the field mm-hmm. um, in terms of like maybe we don't see him absolutely chewing out a quarterback on the sideline multiple times that we saw to also off the field and how he acts. This is, like you said, Todd, this is the Sean Payton show yep. in every single way, and now we're really going to see that um, put put together this offseason, big time. Really quick, Matthew Johansson keeps asking in the, co- in the comments why the contract extension. The Broncos extended Russ before last season, yeah. not before this season. Uh, and as far as I- I'm under the impression is, that was, because remember, Russ had a no-trade clause, so he had to waive that to come to Denver. And it was agreed upon before he waived the no trade clause that you will be getting a contract extension. So, you know, the whole idea of the Broncos made this huge mistake by extending Russ before they ever saw him play a down isn't really the whole the point of this. The mistake was trading for Russ, um, which I don't know if it very few people thought that was a mistake. Right. But extending Russ before he ever played a down was something that was agreed upon that they would have an extension in place before the season was agreed upon before Russ waived his no trade clause. Russ not agreeing to that. What? Russell's agent needs a oh. a house in the Caymans or something. He probably I mean, he has needs a, a big, couple from He needs this. a big, big <laughs> gift from Russ. Well, he's probably going to get that with his, what, 3% at least? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mark Rogers. You know who? Uh, how many clients Mark Rogers has in the NFL? He only needs one. That's all he has. That's <laughs> all he has. He's a baseball guy. Uh. And... Uh, does things different in a way where he was able to get this, um, did an incredible job for Russell Wilson. And there's one more thing that I want to point out with, with this whole thing. This is just Broncos fans should be thrilled with ownership because how many teams would be willing to pay $120 yeah. in cash? million dollars. It, yeah, yeah, thank you. $120 <laughs> mil, I'd probably be willing to pay $120. <laughs> get him out of, get him out of here. <laughs> $120 million in cash um, up front. That's what they're having to pay, Russ, yeah. in less than two years in order to do what the head coach thinks is in the best interest of the team. I guarantee you there's a lot of teams that would say, no, well, first off, they wouldn't have hired Sean Payton because he yeah. would have been too expensive. And then they would have said, no, you're stuck with him because simply we don't have the cash or we don't want to spend that cash. So Broncos organization just continues to do everything that's asked of them, required they go over the top. So like we said, when, when the Walton Penner group became the owners, they have an opportunity to do something that no other team can do with the money they have. And yeah. so far they live, they, they've lived by that. And that's the most important thing with an organization is having the right owners and then just hoping they hire the right people.